follow the money. If you follow the money, you will get your answers. People need to start following the money. Taxes, tax fraud, tax evasion. What was compensated? What was gifts? What are their actual real estate? I'm joined now by the former chief assistant district attorney, Dan Alonzo, who, as mentioned, worked under D.A. Cy Vance, who will make this momentous call, and Tristan Snell, a prosecutor who helped lead the investigation of Trump University. Uh, Welcome to both of you. Dan, I took pains to show viewers here that while this may sound familiar because we've reported it and you were ahead of it on there last week, it's an advancement when NBC and, and The New York Times report that now the office you used to work in, the Manhattan DA, has literally told uh, the Trump organization to expect these charges. Uh, It's a major advancement. And unlike some political and legal stories, there's not a debate tonight, which suggests bad news for Trump. I want to read briefly from the Trump uh, lawyer's statement, which says, quote, they could not get Weisselberg to cooperate and tell them what they wanted to hear. And that's why they're going forward with these charges. Uh, Of course, they have every right to defend themselves. Um, but, Dan, that's also a confirmation, as well as in other parts of the statement, that they are going forward with the charges. What does it mean to indict the entire Trump org? And do you find this report incredible that it could happen soon? Uh, I find this report credible, obviously, and the defense lawyers have confirmed it. It's not strange to me that they're going to indict the entire organization, as you alluded to. Well, but first of all, I don't know the entire organization, some corporate entity presumably the operating company that paid these fringe benefits. So I'm not sure which entity that is. We'll find out presumably next week. That's not so strange that they would do that, given that um, it's being directed, presumably by Alan Weisselberg, who is under the law, a high managerial agent, which is required uh, to, to at least recklessly tolerate the behavior. Here, presumably Weisselberg helped direct it. And so these crimes were committed, presumably, if it's about the fringe benefits, by Weisselberg, allegedly, uh, and also that would be then on behalf of the organization uh, because the organization would be uh, not withholding the right amount of tax and they would be creating records that are incorrect, at least according to what the DA is likely to allege. So based on that and the factors you talked about in that memo, uh, it's not surprising that they would indict one or more Trump corporate entities. The memo, the memo you wrote when you worked directly for DA Vance Have you spoken with anyone in the current DA's office about this case this year? Uh, Other than in most the most general terms, in terms of, you know, how hard they're working no. General terms. But has anyone relayed to you that they would uh, look at the theory of indicting the whole company? No, no, that's that's something that is something they would look at in, you know, any major case. You look at the theory of indicting the whole company. As you mentioned, there are factors and those factors in this case yeah. play com- almost completely against the Trump organization. You know, they didn't cooperate, they didn't self-report, yeah. uh, et cetera. Uh, so it's not that and strange. So I what mean, I'm getting at, Dan, happened. yeah, I'm not super strange, but, but considered a, a heavyweight tactic because many companies have legal issues and the whole thing doesn't necessarily go down. As you point out, uh, we still have to wait and see what they do because they could go for part and there's subsidiaries. That's how Trump's gotten out from under corporate bankruptcies in the past. Um, but I was leading to a minor legal compliment, if I may, which is uh, you don't claim any inside intel. And yet uh, in our reporting here on The Beat, which was partly based on you and other source materials we have, you said this was a strong case. You said you could see this happening. And so I'm curious, uh, before I bring in Tristan, to to walk us through how you saw that coming. Is it just that there is a strong legal case here? And how do you square that with, again, to be fair, the defense from the Trump lawyers today, which is this, they say, looks like an overreach if it's only about, quote unquote, benefits? Well, we don't know how strong the case is in terms of evidence, but presumably they wouldn't be filing it if they didn't believe they could prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. So I don't know how strong it is. What I do know is that what's been reported by you guys, by The Times, by others, uh, as being the facts, uh, do lead to to a uh, a natural uh, charge. By the way, not the most severe charge in the world, right? Obviously, it's different to charge you know, taxable fringe benefits versus millions of dollars of, you know, just not paying taxes or embezzlement or something like that. So we have to put it in perspective. That said, you know, if you're committing a tax fraud, it's not just the state of New York that's being defrauded. It's the IRS. Uh, You know, there are creative theories that um, the DA 
could bring into play, like false business records, false filings uh, with the state. I mean, it, it is a, uh, you know, it is a case of some moment. I would not call it, you know, the case of the century. And I also want to caution that just because they're indicting one or more entities, it doesn't mean the whole Trump organization is going to go down. Obviously, they can defend it and uh, and they they will, even if convicted, you know, it's not like it's a bank. It's not like they're going to lose a license or something. Um, they do have some collateral consequences, but it's not going to be one of those things like Arthur Anderson, which went out of business when the Justice Department convicted them. Interesting. So you you see them potentially surviving, depending on how it's structured, even if they lost. Uh, Tristan, your views on all the above. Yeah, I mean, for one thing, we actually also brought a case against the Trump Organization when we did our civil prosecution of Trump University. Uh, so on the civil side, this is also something that happens all the time. You're going to go up to hit one of the uh, parent entities or holding companies. And that's what Trump Organization is. It's a, it's a holding company. It then holds interests in a whole series of a couple of hundred LLCs that then hold the individual properties and interests of Trump's uh, businesses. Uh, so, you know, this is not a completely unprecedented thing for the Trump people to say that it's overreach is just a, it, that, that's a bunch of hogwash. That's, that's just them making, well, me, making hay me... out of this. Let me press you, Tristan. Uh, the mm -hmm. Times report consults independent experts who say they can't think of a corporate level indictment uh, on just benefits. I think the benefits thing is what makes this slightly different than a lot of other cases. But that's the, the big point that I think needs to be made here is that this is this is round one or the first inning or whatever sports metaphor you want to use. This is just the beginning. This is not the main event, not even close to the main event. Uh, they are going to be bringing, I believe, a surgically uh, basically a surgically driven case here to get at something they know they can win and actually get indictments on Trump organization, probably on a number of these individuals. I think that obviously Weisselberg now, Tristan, is, is probably a main target. Tristan, and then let from me, there, they're going let to me do press you on that. Yeah. Let me press you on that uh, devil's advocate or arguendo, as they say in court, uh, for the sake of learning. <laughs> yeah. Some people hearing you say first inning would think, really? Donald Trump's legal problems are now in the first inning because to a lot of Americans who follow this stuff and, you know, we think beat viewers are up to date. There's been a lot of innings of Trump, you which you handled the the Trump Soho investigation by the same D.A. office where Dan worked that did not end in charges. The Mueller investigation, the Georgia investigation, the other uh, impropriety investigations in, in Trump organization, the NDAs, which was in federal court in SDNY. I could go on, but the show's not long enough to list all the legal problems. I didn't even get into all the indictments of people like Bannon and Stone and Manafort. So when you say first inning, that could cut both ways. I give you, as always, the chance uh, to expand and rebut. Yeah, I, I like to re rebut that. The, no, it's first inning of this phase of going after the Trump organization and uh, Trump and his employees on the taxes, uh, the tax fraud issue that uh, and the bank fraud issue, this investigation that they've been undertaking with the Manhattan DA and the New York AG's office. This is the first round of that piece. If we're talking about the whole grand sweep of different things that Trump has gotten himself into, yeah, we're in like the 344th round. Okay. I will say, um, I, Tristan I, Snell general, and Dan. Way, is, sorry, I, this is generally, it's not the first inning, but they're obviously calling someone's bluff on this because they've been investigating much weightier issues. Whether they're going to file those charges, we don't know, but obviously they want, they tried to get him to cooperate. According to the reporting, yes. he's not cooperating and they're calling his bluff. They're charging him and they're going to charge him with whatever they have right now that's provable. And that's without prejudice. They've got a long term grand jury. It's going to be around for at least yep. six months. It's going yep. to continue hearing evidence. And that's that. I'm, I'm supposed to fit in a break. I'm supposed to fit in a break. But the question that hangs over that then is, is that strategically sound if they have other things that they're holding back? Or when is it time to call everyone's bluff and put all the cars on the table? I leave that as a question to brew on over the weekend. And Dan and Tristan, as experts, will both be back with us. Uh, they're they keep telling me to fit in a break. So thanks to both of you.